Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, Land Geek, your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's podcast, 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 what am I saying? Podcast. We have all the usual suspects, except for one. We've got the Zen master, Mike Zeno. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. We've got dude buddy that I cap OG, Scott Bossman. We've got Taria putting in her reps, Harris. And last but not least, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything. InvestorNinjas.com. See how we're skipping the pleasantries? We're getting right to it. Yeah. Tria, you, you, you like that? Not even, a ho- not even a hello, how are you? Keeps people on their toes. Right? People are not going to be fast forwarding through that middle part anymore. Because now we're getting right to our topic, which is from uh, boot camp. Eight people asked this question. And Tria, we'll have to start with you as you are our Facebook expert that we had mentioned that um, we're posting right now on Facebook. So to give some context to the question, our favorite marketing channel right now is going to be Facebook Marketplace. And then from there, landmoto.com. And then way down the list is Craigslist now, right? Or Eric, do you disagree with that? Uh, no, I agree with it, but only because it's really hard to post on Craigslist right now. Once we crack that code and and figure it out again, I think we'll be right back in Craigslist, um, marketing there. Okay. So the question is, are you doing your own ad copies or are you outsourcing that part? So Tria, let's just start with you because we never start with you. And I think Mike Zano really loves the break. (laughs) Um, So the question is, if are you doing your own ad copy or outsourcing? Um, So if you're asking me personally, we outsource our ad copy, um, mostly because it's time consuming and it becomes very redundant and just having to come up with, you know, catchy, topics and things to write for me i did not find that fun at all and my time was better spent doing other things in the business than trying to come up with you know ad copy um if that's something that someone enjoys doing they have the bandwidth to do and you know their business is running smooth and they just have all this extra time i don't see anything wrong with someone doing their own ad copy um but if we're trying to follow the model that's been set forth, you don't want to spend a lot of time in the trenches doing things that you can hire someone at a, a decent price um, to do for you. So I'm not a fan of people doing their own ad copy. Um, one, unless they just don't have the money to buy someone to pay someone to do it. Um, I'm not a fan of of that at all. I think our time is best spent working, you know, more logistically on the, the business itself and less, you know, into the mundane tasks. Well, you know, I'm going to agree with you. You know, there's no one more ambitiously lazy than myself, but let's ask Scott Bossman. What's he doing? Oh yeah. We're definitely outsourcing ad copy, um, for all of the advertising platforms that we're listing land on. Um, I would say though, that I think it's important for people who are new to the business to write their own ad copy when they're first starting out uh, so they can learn the intricacies of what works and maybe what doesn't. Now, I don't think you have to do it forever, but I think uh, you're gonna get, you know, Mark, one of your favorite, one of my favorite modules that you do at bootcamp, which is coming up is, uh, is your marketing module. Um, you know, people learn so much in that and they come away and people even sold the property last time at bootcamp implementing what, you know, you taught them and what Tria taught them. And that was really cool. So I I think it's important for beginners to take action and do that. But yeah, once you've done it, once your training wheels are off, once you've done it, you know, a number of times you outsource this, outsource and move it on to move on to the next part of the business. But, uh, for me, it was valuable knowing what worked and what didn't and, um, how I was going to implement that going forward in my business uh, to make it successful. No, I think that's a great point because what you're basically saying is, you know, we're saying you should delegate 
not abdicate. And if you just give it to somebody, then you're abdicating. You need to know at a, at a, at least a deep enough level, what they should be doing, how they should be doing it, how much time it should be taking, and then be able to measure, measure and manage the results of their work. And if you haven't done it yourself, then you have no context on whether or not they're doing a good job or not. So I think that's a really, really good point. Um, Zen Master, Mike Zeno. Well, this is probably one of the times you'd want to go first on the podcast because they've said such wonderful things. I mean, really, I, I agree with everything Taria said. Um, Scott Bossman made a great point about you should uh, um, you know, learn to do something first. But I don't know if that's always the case, too, because as I'm thinking and I'm hearing the background, they're putting a wall in my backyard, a retaining wall. I wouldn't want to go learn how to do the retaining wall before I hire them, right? I, I, I just got different prices and uh, realized that it's a, it's a good price. So I think there's some things in the business that we can sort of look at more objectively and, and look at the pricing and look at uh, the associated costs. And get what, what are some of those things? Let me just jump in. What, what are some of those things you're like, you, you don't need to know this. Just go ahead and outsource it right away. Yeah, I, I think the ad copy could be one, actually. You know, I think that if you look, there's enough people out there that do ad copy you could find on Upwork or you could find uh, on other platforms, even Fiverr, and you could get an idea of what the going rate is, right? It's like you're going to have someone come plumb your house. Uh, they, there's a going rate to put a sink in or to put a toilet in. So I think that there are certain things you could do in that regard. Um, there are certain things that probably uh, you wouldn't like picking an area or uh, building um, you know, pricing an area, that's, that's a little different, right? That's got some more intricacy to it. You know, that's very specific to our business and there's not a lot of people that could assist you, right? That's something you have to do yourself. So I don't know. I don't, I don't want to be the devil's advocate on the podcast, but I'm saying that there are certain things that you could definitely get a, a sort of a, a measure from the, you know, from the market of what these things are worth. And um, then just say, you know what? I don't know, but I know it's going to cost me uh, $20 to get four, four ad copy or whatever it might be as an example. I know I don't want to spend, uh, you know, however long it's going to take me to do that. I'm comfortable with that price. It fits into my budget. Yeah, no, I, I like the devil's advocate piece of it for sure. And I think some, there are some pieces of it that, you know, you don't need to go and learn Excel. You can just go on Fiverr and have somebody scrub a list. I agree. You don't have to do that piece yourself. I do think that there is some value to knowing enough about marketing to even just say, you know, this group over this group and this price over that price is better. Because if you don't, if you're just abdicating it, how will you even know what a good job looks like? Right. How will you even know if they're doing a good job, right? It's like the blind leading the blind. So I disagree, Mike Zeno. Well, some people, you know, like <laughs> that's I thought you might. But some people, I thought you were agreeing the whole time. I just threw a curveball at it, but, <laughs> but it's like some people like they'll hire a plumber and like they don't even double check it. They're like, I just think it was a great job. Like that guy came in, showed up, knocked it out, and you know what? It's twenty dollars for my ad copy. He did a great job. Maybe I could have got it for ten. How how dare you compare plumbing <laughs> to ad copy? This is, a, I mean, how how far off can we go on this metaphor? Uh, why don't I mean? I why don't we were agree why, with me the whole time? Why not just compare it to you know rocket science? I thought you would agree with me the whole time. Give me a curveball. So if we're on that mode, I'd say I disagree with this with the quick opening because I feel like it's not woman fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's you don't you don't think it's respectful of the of the listeners' time. I felt like I was going to say hi to you, and then you just skipped over me. I felt like someone, you put your hand out to shake their hand, and they just go like this. I just, I don't know. I felt kind of betrayed myself as a participant. I mean, we're, that's a big word right there, betrayed <laughs> on the opening. You know what? You're, look, you're entitled to your feelings 100%, and I'm going to take it as feedback. Feelings were hurt. That's a good point. That's a good and point. I just want to officially say hi, Mike. How are you? Hello, Mark. Nice to see you. It's good to see you. So <laughs> I'll go on mute now. So Taria has her view of saying, yeah, I'm outsourcing it. Scott says, yeah, I'm outsourcing it, but I think you should do it first. Mike has his view. Well, it's just like being hiring a plumber. Just get the best price for it. You don't even need to know what good ad copy is. 
as long as the toilet flushes, good enough for me, and it was at the right price. Eric Peterson, how do you feel about it? Um, you know, like everybody else, it's it's something that's outsourced. Um, you know, in terms of Facebook in particular, uh, the way that we operate there is uh, I have various posters that are posting our ads on Facebook, and they are actually responsible for writing their own ads. We provide resources uh, in the form of long form marketing content for our properties um, and other example ads. But ultimately, they put together those ads um, under my guidelines. And I like that strategy because um, it means that each poster is going to have a little bit of a different personality and tone to their ads. They're not all the same that way. And uh, we get more variety out there in the marketplace. So that's what we do. Okay. I love it. Mike Zeno, what do you think? I think it's good, but Mark, just for clarification, I didn't say I would want shoddy plumbing. I didn't want to say that I, you know, it, it, I didn't want to say I want junky ad copy. That that wasn't the point. No, your your point was like I don't need to, I don't need to go become a plumber to know what a no. toilet looks like properly installed. Right, exactly. <laughs> and I I just think that it's it has to do more than flush. It has to not leak. It has Correct. to be seated possibly. You know, you don't want to be wiggling around on that thing, right? You want that thing to be seated properly. But yeah, my, my point is that you know enough about what a good toilet should, how it should work and the plumbing should work. And to Scott Boston's point, you should know enough about ad copy to know, is that ad copy leaking? Does that ad copy flush? Well, there is a litmus test. Which is a lead, correct? Correct. What's a, do you get yeah. a lead? Do you get a qualified lead? Yeah. You know... I can like Scott Todd right now is just been biting his lip. I'm just waiting to see where he falls on this equation. He's just been, you can just see like, he's he's just up and at the bit. I'm going to, he's he's been biting his lip. He's like the the self-discipline for him not to jump in earlier. I'm not sure if he's coming down hot on me or you, Mark, but I'm ready to find out. Look at this. Look at that Cheshire smile, like a Cheshire cat. I, you know what? I want to thank everybody for being on the top round table today. And I thought it was a great topic. Oh, wait, (laughs) let's go to Scott Todd. Wait, this guy can't hear you. Hey, Mike, can you hear me? Mike? Loud and clear. Yeah. How are you doing today, man? I'm a little flustered right now. Are you going to make it worse? <laughs> listen, are you going to call my phone? I don't know what's about to happen. Mike, listen, man, I want to tell you, you and I were like brothers the other day because like you, I actually put out a fire. I was very proud of myself. Oh, wow. and I have a lot of respect for what you do. And and like the, the work that you do, I literally put it out with my two feet because I was driving down the street. I saw some smoke. I made a U-turn. I'm like, tell my wife, the, the median's on fire. Went back. I stomped it all out, made sure it was all clear and left. My, I smelt like fire. Just a little thing, man. I smelt like fire. You put the shirt on I gave you? Um, I went home and put it on. Yeah, I told my wife, like, how do I look? You know, fire, fire, honorary firefighter. And Mike, I got to tell you something, man. You, I know you like curveball, so, you know, you got a curveball today. Hey, Mark, since we're talking about, like, outsourcing first, did you learn how to change the tire on your – I'm sorry. Did you learn how to change the oil on your car before you got someone else to do it? Or did you recently, like, when you had an electrician come in, did you sit down there and try to figure out how to do the switch first in order to hire the electrician first? Or what, what did you do? How did you do that? Okay, again, this is not a good analogy. Why? So, because it's not. It's because. just not. Why? Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you why. I'll, I'll tell you why. Okay, so. <laughs> if I'm, if, if, because I'm managing a land investing business okay. and I need to know how to manage it. Okay. There are certain specific things in life that I don't know enough and I will never know enough to even manage. And to Mike's point, as long as it flushes and as long as it doesn't leak, good enough. Now, that being said, I would spend time looking at Yelp reviews for a good plumber or a good electrician or a good car mechanic. I'm not going to go to school for those things because they're not a good use of my time. My hourly rate is way higher. That's why I outsource it. And we're all outsourcing our marketing. 
But to Scott Bossman's point, we want to delegate it. That's why we don't want to abdicate. We want to know enough. And Scott's not saying do your own marketing for a year. He's saying do it once. Once. Okay. Well, here, here's the thing. I'm not, I'm not opposed to writing an ad or, or everybody write an ad one time. It, it, so, it sounds like you are. In fact, uh, in flight school, we, we actually write an ad, especially like our last class. I made them write an ad live on the call and post it. So that's not the, the point. But the point is, is that, um, you know, if a CEO comes into a, to a company the CEO is not going to sit there and try to write an ad. He's going, he's going to say to the marketing team, do your best. Now, if you're a marketer, if your degree and your expertise is in marketing, well, I would tell you, you're kind of crazy to give up the marketing just because you don't want to market because you want to be the CEO. That would be the last thing I would give up. It would be a lot like people who say, Hey, I don't like sales. So I'm going to give that up to me. I didn't really love the sales side either. I mean, I would do it, but I didn't love it. But you know what is, I think that everybody's, I think the last thing you should give up is sales because the most important part of the whole business is making the cash register ring. Now I might have a, a you know, a, a, a skewed viewpoint of that, but without sales, you have no business period. But when it comes to something like simple as writing an ad, I don't think that you have to sit there and write an ad. If you understand what you're looking for and you understand like what an ad looks like and how do you understand what an ad looks like, go look at one. Now, if you're not getting leads, well, then maybe maybe you have a problem with your ad writer. But I do think that you should spend more time instead of writing the ads, maybe spend more time thinking about the type of people that you're going to attract so that you can tell the ad writer, this is the type of person I'm trying to write this ad for. That's yeah, and, and, and to Mike Zano's point, because I've given him such a hard time, you know, we have two coaching clients who've graduated from our community. They know the land business. They've trained a team of VAs. So you can go to landvaforyou.com and hire an ad writer for Facebook. And they already been trained. They already know enough. So to Mike Zano's point, yeah, that would be your plumber. Right. Or to Scott's point, that would be your electrician right there. They have already been trained. They know what they're doing. And in that sense, that would be truly delegating. And to Scott's point, that would be being a, a, an effective CEO because you make no money writing ad copy. And to Scott's point, I've, I've said it before, the, only, the last two things I outsourced were county research and sales. Because without either one of those, it, you get your county research wrong, the whole process just breaks down for number one and if you don't sell you're right you, you got that's that's the fuel that drives the business um so i think i think everybody had a, a really good point even mike zeno Tria, what do you think i think both points were extremely well articulated i think um just to kind of sum it up is yes you should outsource should you be familiar with the marketing process? Absolutely. But then there are also checks and balances in place like statistics and going in and taking a look at the ads. And that goes back to you um, delegating and not abdicating, even though you've delegated the content to the uh, copyright to someone else, it's still our responsibility as a CEO to make sure it's effective and going in and looking at our leads and checking the statistics, how many views, you know, how well is the ad content? I, I love it. I love it. So um, I thought it was really a really good topic for mm -hmm. sure. But now we're at that point in the podcast where we go back to Tria and we ask her for her tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives, Tria putting in her reps, Harris, what do you got? Okay, so I felt like I needed to combat the app that you gave us. What was it? We croak? Yes. I found an app called Happy Things. And this app will give you things to do, think about that make you happy. Nothing, there's nothing in it about death. 
So one of the things is like, raise your head and look for one thing that makes you smile. <laughs> so happy things. And you'll get a reminder if you want. You can set up a reminder. You can even skip some of them. Like one of them told me to park, you know, the furthest away while I'm sitting here. So I can say, give me another one. So it just helps you. For me, I'm always head down on my laptop, on my computer doing something. So it helps me kind of wake up, think about something, gratitude, be happy, and it improves my day. Yeah, so I'm, I'll, I'll make a confession. I did download that app as well. <laughs> and I have been doing it every day. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm like six days in. And it's, it's not as good as We Croak. I was going to say, compare it to We Croak. Because We Croak <laughs> reminds you of five times a day of your mortality, which and then puts you into a state of gratitude that, hey, I get to do whatever I'm doing, not I have to do it kind of thing. And then I get to share with you some of those, those wise quotes as well on Voxer, which even um, Mike Zano seems to appreciate from time to time, the Zen master. That's really good though. Well, yeah. I was thinking we don't really need to get the app if Taria gets it and posts it on the uh, Voxer. We could have the benefit of both apps since we get them anyway. It'd be perfect. We don't yeah, even have to get it. Do yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, that's a great tip. That's a great tip. So um, I want to thank the listeners, remind them that today's sponsor is Flight School. And you learn how the next 16 weeks and really transform your life. Um, and start going up that mountain of land investing with somebody who's done it thousands and thousands of times with Scott Todd as your flight school Sherpa. He's going to take you up there quickly, safely, efficiently. And guess what? That tuition ain't going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed. You're going to make back that money 180 days or less cash or terms deals. Just show us your work. That's it. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training and schedule a free consultation call with either the nightcap OG, dude buddy, Scott Bossman, or the Zen master, Mike Zeno. And then if you're talking to Mike, you can say, man, boy, wasn't Mark a jerk on that podcast about marketing? And you guys can commiserate about it, right? Pretty good. So please do that. Um, Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. Eric, are we good? We're good. I just want to remind everybody that boot camp is just around the corner. Uh, what is it? The end of April ish. End of April. Yeah, we're we're so. April twenty third to twenty fifth. Yeah, if you haven't signed up, go to landgeek.com forward slash boot camp uh, for sure. Um, thank you for that. Tari, are we good? All good. Scott Bossman. We're good. I'm afraid to ask Mike. Everything's great now. I was. It was a great podcast. I was especially enjoyed the part where Scott Todd chimed in, but it's great. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, I, Mike, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the firefighting buddies have to stick together, man. The brotherhood. Yeah. The brotherhood has to stick together. Oh. Sounds like someone might be getting a, a sweatshirt with a hero fire on it soon. I, listen, look at what the, look at what the last one did for me. I saved the world. There you go. Um, well, I want to thank the listeners, remind them the only way that Mike Zane is going to continue to put up with my shenanigans is if you do us three little favors, you got to follow the podcast, rate, review it, send us a screenshot of that review, support at the We're going to send you for free the wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. All right. We ready to do this? Yes. One, two, three. Let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Not bad. I think, Not bad. Did. I think he did that on purpose. Yeah. What's that? He wanted to sell Is that what I said? Just to stir the pot? Yeah. What'd you say? Mm -hmm. he is a I'll, pot I'll tell you one thing, though. The pot has been stirred now because some guy on this call doesn't even have a T-shirt. And you would think that through all the hills and valleys that we've been through together, that he might have a t-shirt. I'm just saying. Wow. And some girl the, on those, this podcast does not. I, I hear loud and clear. It was just, it was one boot camp and they were handed out. Listen, and that was many years ago. Many years ago. Many. 
Yeah, but look at the long-term effect. You just put out a fire last week. Well, what was it, Mike? 2020 at boot camp, you passed those out? I mean. Yeah. Uh-huh. It, was, <laughs> it was under the table, I know. Stir, still stirring. <laughs> still yeah. stirring. Well, listen, you know, it did it, it just, it, you know, look, this, we, the, the pot stir has gotten stirred. I'm not sure. Right. What did Scott Bossman do today that stirred the pot? I must have missed that. Spoke or early on, early on, you know, early on. Mike, I, I have already forgotten what he's done too, but you know. I wish you'd forget uh, the things I've done. Well, how did that happen? Did you get so quick <laughs> with him? Well, the problem is, is that, you know, Scott Bossman pr- provided, I actually, I guess it wasn't Scott, it was somebody else, provided a picture that is forever ingrained in my brain. So, you know. I have maybe- never worn a bald cap. Yes, the, that's the problem. That's the problem. I did not ever wear a right. bald cap. It's okay. Mm. It's all right. Mike. We're good. We're good. Um. So, on a side note, um, I got to give a shout out to Paul Flanagan. I've watched this scene in Your Honor. Do you guys see Your Honor yet? Oh yes, did see it. Yeah, he was great. <laughs> he was great. Um, so Paul, if you're listening to this, well done, well done. It's kind of cool arguing with Brian Cranston. I don't yeah. know who's arguing with him, but they're, they're going back at it. They're going back and forth. Um, I messaged him. I'm like, how many scenes, how many, how long, how many takes did that take? I don't know. I, I didn't hear back. I don't know. He'll, he'll get like, back to me. He's, yeah, he's probably on, on set. One take, one take baby. One take. One take. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.